Okay. All right. Hope everybody's doing good. Good afternoon. Hope you're having an awesome, wonderful day so far today on this another Thursday. Bible study. Let me, let me get rid of that. I'm trying to get in share mode. Y'all know I'll be uh, lagging behind sometimes. Uh, so I shall share that. Right. And then I shall continue to share that. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Good to see you. I hope you're doing all right. Uh, we're going to go and go and get into this. Get into this thing. As you can see, as you can tell by the title. Uh, you know. I've been giving this much thought. This has been on my mind. Make sure I'm on do not disturb because I sit here and get texts and everything else. So uh, so here we are on another Thursday. I hope you're doing good. Welcome to another Bible study where we uh, open up the good word of God. Let's try to find God's will for our lives. Uh, but, that, but not only that, it's just not a, a Bible study where we come in and we just try to study something from a book. But we want to be in tune with God's spirit. We want to speak on we want to, what's called a rhema word, that God can speak to us. We believe very, very strongly at, with, with abundant Christian living ministries that we should have a working, active relationship with God, that God wants to talk to you on a daily basis. And to, uh, to try to, uh, hello, Sister Teresa, good to see you. Good to see you. And so this is what we're dealing with. And, you know, and today, our word tonight, as you see from the title, the demonic assault on young minds. You know, every week when we come here, we do these Bible studies. It's a blessing. We do not take it for granted to be in front of you doing these Bible studies. And throughout the week, uh, I know uh, we all have different. We have Sister Teresa, who you see, said hello there. Uh, she gives a word every day. We have Sister Patty, who comes on 12 o'clock uh, on Mondays. And then Tuesdays, we have my aunt and an and overseer of the church. It comes on every Tuesday uh, at 630. And each time, you know, even when it's my time on Thursdays at 7.30, and we've been doing this for quite some time. God has been gracious to us. But, you know, I really take this thing seriously, and I seek God, and I say, God, what do I talk about? You know, I don't have a 52-week lesson plan that I bought from the uh, the minister's shop, but I try to go to God every week and say, God, what word do your people need? And, you know, and I believe during the week that God may show me, good evening, uh, beautiful cousin, good to see you. Good to see you. Hope you're doing good today. Hope you're doing good. Uh, but what I try to ask God, what would you have me to speak to the, your people about? You never know who's going to come through here, hear a word. Maybe that word, maybe someone might be influenced to go uh, deeper into God. And, uh, you know, in, even from this Bible study, to dig deep in that word, to be greater for God and to influence more people. So every word here counts. We do not take it for granted. Now, on to the subject at hand. You know, we live in, uh, in, in in very strange days. Anybody that is a Christian, it is our job to gauge the environment around us. Look at your family. Look at your daughters, your brothers, your sisters, nieces, and nephews. If you know God, you have a great responsibility. A responsibility to be a watchman, almost as if you're watching on the wall and you're responsible for warning the inhabitants of that city if there is an attack coming to that city. We know that this world is temporal, but we and what we believe supposedly we 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 study to know and attain things that are eternal. You know, these temporary things that we fight so hard to attain in this world cannot be compared to the eternal. And so we have a great responsibility. We have to try and, and pray for and convince those that are around us, not just by word, but by example, that we are, are, are connected with the internal, the eternal, that we have a word that is eternal, that we have something more than something that we've read from a book. We have a word from the creator of all things, the unseen God. It's a very serious thing because there are others that claim to know and have the same things. 
And so without further ado, we're going to get into this subject matter of the night, the assault on young minds. This is where we are in our understanding of uh, uh, our religion today, because there, there are many out here in the days that we're living, living in that do not have a religion, that do not believe in a God. They are, you know, and, and I have as a 40 something year old man, maybe I'm divorced my exact age, I'm getting on up there. But as a 40 something year old man, I have, I have seen a little bit in my day. I've seen changes from the way that things were when I was, hey, how you doing? How you doing, Pastor? I have seen changes from the way things were when I was a young person and, and to the way that things are now. Now, they have to be observed. I believe God gives us his spirit and then he uses us to speak on those changes or to affect those changes. Or those changes are not for the good, then we have to be that watch, that watchman or that catalyst for our family. There are many who sit in oblivion who don't understand spiritual things, who don't know how to pray. And to be honest with you, that has been on my mind a lot this last week. What I've been witnessing in my family, with people that I love, with people that I, that I know personally, and people that I know from afar, there almost seems to be a great gulf uh, between them and true spirituality. The same spiritual truths, the spiritual commitment and desire that seemed to shape my childhood seems to be under attack in the days that we're living in and the days that we're living in. So I'm going to go ahead and pray right now as we get into some of these observances and uh, may God help me because I will say this is a difficult lesson. I struggle with it all week. I've questioned, is this what I'm supposed to be talking about? Make sure, because, you know, you always got to test. You know, we, we believe in an unseen God. We got to make sure that we're hearing not our own thoughts. But we have to stay before God to be sure. And we'll get in all that. So just pray for me. Pray with me as we get into this lesson tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to come before you. God, I... I know I don't have anything uh, important or intelligent to say to the people. It is only by your spirit, only by your spirit that you can teach us. May your Holy Spirit teach us not coming from me, not, not, not James means individually. Heavenly Father, even right now, if anyone has a need, if anyone's body is tired, their mind is tired, if anyone is full of anxiety, then we ask you right now by your Holy Spirit to begin to, to, begin to dispatch your angels dispatch your spirit, dispel any unclean forces in the, uh, the surrounding these people in their households. Right now, may your spirits of the spirit of holiness begin to create a, an incubator around them, so that their minds can be clear to hear a revelation from you that will affect their lives for positive and bring them closer to you. Heavenly Father, we are believing for supernatural strength to do right, to do good, for those that are unconverted to be converted. Not because something that I may say, but because your Holy Spirit is strong and mighty. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this evening. And in your Holy Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, so here we go. So, Mr. Shane, I see you slide in. I see your picture up there. It's good to see you, and I hope you're doing well yourself. And so, you know, and I do expect some feedback on tonight's lesson, uh, I, I, uh, the demonic assault on young minds, you know, and everybody, and I'm sure each person is. We all in here, if we're not young ourselves, we have, whether they're sons or daughters, we have nieces nephews, friends with children, you know, and so we all see, we all know young people and we all know the effects uh, that the society that we have has on young people. Now, my personal observations, I'm going to go ahead and say, it's no secret that when you look at even popular music today, you know, not, not too long ago, we had a rapper come out. And, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, I'm going to bring up the little Nas X fella. Now, this rapper came out and he was he was intentionally targeted to, I mean, I'm talking about young people, my child, my child's age. He was literally going to elementary schools 
singing a country song. They were so smooth with it. He did not just rap, but he was a country singer and a rapper. He brought in all races, genres. He brought in the country crowd. He brought in the pop music crowd. He brought in the, the, the hip hop crowd. And he sung a cute little song. Then immediately after that, and you probably all know the story all too well, immediately after that, this same individual comes out with one of the most demonic videos, with one of the most demonic songs that ever graced the airways of any radio station. Now the song, first he come out and say it, now after amassing all this following as a singer or an entertainer, they even got Billy Ray Cyrus a country singer, the father of Miley Cyrus, which was a longtime popular Disney TV show. And we all know what Disney TV shows are. Listen to this. We're going to have to think about this. We're going to have to put our minds on and try to think about what is going on in our society. When something like this, especially you older people, you think about the way things were. When you were younger, you think about the way things were as your grandmothers and our elderly aunts told to talk to us uh, around the fire at, at, you, at youthful cookouts about the way that they knew God and worshiped God, about their elders before them that prayed for them, okay? But now think about this individual who comes out with these songs. They knew strategically in my mind, as I contemplated this fact, as I prayed about this message, they knew strategically what they were doing. If we do not begin to understand the environment around us, if we as Christians do not begin to understand the supernatural nature of what we believe and to understand the weapons of our warfare, we have to know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So before the guy comes out, first he comes out and he says, I'm gay. And he promotes a gender fluid type of uh, type of lifestyle. Keep in mind, the guy's fan base is six. I mean, it's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve year old babies. I'm not even talking about young 16, 17, 18 year olds. They were his fan base as well. But he's going to elementary schools and middle schools, and he's singing for these children. He is adored by these children. Listen, you know, there was a show called American Idol that used to come on. American Idol was where they picked a singer to make famous. It was not It was called the American Idol for a reason, because Idol, when you get idolatry, these people, they know that the singers, the music, the entertainers, the actors, the people that they make famous before these kids, draw a following. We want to have Eminem's hair. We want to look like, we want to have Jennifer Anderson's haircut. We want to wear the same, uh, we want to wear the same clothes as the popular singer. We want to think like them, and they have a great influence. These people, and I, I'm not even going to get into these people that do this. Do you really think, two things, do you really think that this is by coincidence? Do you think that they were like, hey, oh, oh, you're gay. We didn't know you were gay before. Do you, these people, the, the God they serve, the spirit that they move in, you know, there was a time when even rap music used to be uplifting. But now anyone to tell you in the music industry that the people that run this industry uh, discourage positive rap. You know, here recently there was as there was a movie that came out, Judas and the Black Messiah, and it was dealing with an individual by the name of Fred Hampton. Now, before this movie came out, and before I even knew who Fred Hampton was, I saw an FBI document. It was called Cointel Pro. If you get an opportunity, write it down, look this document up. Cointel Pro is the was the code name for counterintelligence program counterintelligence program. This counterintelligence program would monitor all movements in America from the hippie movement to the feminist movement and almost primarily the, the back in those days, the, 
the Negro movement. They had tabs on where well, they followed M Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, and Fred Hampton. Their mission was to prevent the rising. This is FBI documents, unclassified documents. People, we have to know and understand the assaults and attacks. That's not an attack on my government, on the government. But I'm saying, this is what we have to be, be understand. They wanted to prevent the rising of a black messiah, an individual that would unite, an individual that would unite people for the betterment of those people of that race. They didn't care if it was black, white, or whatever colors they were. But they wanted to prevent that. But on the same note, in this COINTELPRO document, there was also another side. They would present an antithesis. They would present a protagonist. I'm sorry, an antagonist. Uh, and, and, and they would present an antagonist and prevent the protagonist. The antagonist was the antichrist figure that they would promote in their music. An individual that they would make uh, uh, an idol for the people, but he would display immoral and detrimental characteristics and mentalities, such as premarital sex, gain a drug lifestyle, being disobedient to parents. This is in an FBI document. See, and, and, I, and, and even I have to come down because I know it's not just the society. This is not just the government that's doing this. What's going on, Jazz? Good to see you, brother. Hope you're doing good today, man. This is not just the government that's doing this, but Christians, people that call on the name of the Most High God, people who look to his son, the Messiah, for, you, for, for our refuge. We have to know that this, these are spiritual forces behind every action, every, everything that they're doing. They're doing under the influence of a supernatural spiritual power. Not only that, but look, I want you to, for, you know, when I was in high school, and I knew, I will go ahead and tell you, I knew that much of this would be a conversation back and forth, a practicality of things, because we're dealing with the uh, demonic assault on young minds. I feel that God showed me that there would come, and, I, and we will get into the word as well, but God showed me that there would come a, 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 a vomiting out of the pits of hell that would try to wash away our children. We can track what Satan has been doing, his methods, his techniques, and we have to be aware. We, we can't be ignorant of Satan's devices, and we have to understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. When we don't combat these, these evil spiritual forces with the weapons of our warfare, then we will lose. We will sit back while our nieces, nephews, sons, and daughters get swept away by the stream of evil vomited out of the pit of hell. The days that we are living in are different than the days that we were raised, okay? And we, if we don't look with spiritual eyes, we won't understand the technique that the devil is using. As a matter of fact, we won't even understand, we won't even know who the enemy is. In other words, we will look at the government. We will look at a race of people as the enemy, not realizing that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So let's get into this thing. Now, we know now, one of the examples, you know, like I said, on Little Nas X, there was no coincidence. This was by design. Again, I'm not even going to get into, we need to be better researchers. They distract us with so many things. But understanding who are the people behind these record labels? Who are the people behind these TV shows? What? We must look with spiritual eyes. So, you know, you know and, and, and that is it. And, you know, and we'll get into how do we look with spiritual eyes? How can we stay on top? You know, if we're just distracted as the children, we'll never know. I'll give you an example. And I have to say, uh, you know, I went to Carowinds last weekend with my son. As we were at Carowinds, when I first got there, I'm an older fuddy dud. I work a lot. I don't get out much. I'm not the partier that I used to be. Trust me, buddy, I was wild. Wild, I tell you. Probably wilder than anybody I'm seeing sitting here in this thing now. But God changed me. And I thank God for his changing power. But at Carowinds. At Carowinds, when I was walking around, I couldn't, 
I'm, I'm a man and I'm a single celibate man. But let me tell you, everywhere I looked from the left to the right, I saw skin, more skin than I've ever seen and out in a public outing like that. I was almost unprepared. To be quite honest with you, I had to excuse myself and ask God for the strength that it takes to walk a righteous and holy life. Because everybody know that we can't walk righteous. We can't walk holy out of willpower. We can't do it. It's, it's, it's not in us to walk. We need the Holy One of Israel. We need the Spirit of Christ living in us, walking through us. And he'll, he'll allow us to see and face that and, and come up under that pressure to see this is where we draw our strength. There's no strength in me. Oh, Jim Means done failed plenty of times until I had to finally learn that it's only in God that I can walk righteous and holy. But we can walk righteous and holy. But the point that I'm making is, it's almost as if every female that was there, you know, and they've done it unconsciously. What bad people? They didn't come there sinning or they weren't walking around twerking or anything. But it's almost like there was an inner cry from each individual female there. Almost 99%. There was some that still walked in modesty. And, uh, but almost 99% was saying, look at me. Look at my skin. Look at my stomach. Look at my backside. Look at my cleavage. Bring attention to me. You know, I mean, and it was almost like, you know, my heart went out to many of them. But it was, it is the way of our society. It has become ingrained. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, and in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And in the days of Noah, it said that their imaginations were evil continually. They probably didn't even realize they didn't wake up and say, hey, I'm going to be evil today. But the natural thoughts that sprang up in the, in, in the people in that time were just naturally evil, naturally full of sorcery, astrology, witchcraft, promiscuity, porn in that time. And so I went and I, you know, and I needed the Holy Spirit to divert my eyes, which he did graciously. But one thing that I did notice, even the seven, eight and nine year old children had skin poking at the bottom of their little jeans. And I say, you know, to me, I thought, you know, and some people might say, well, Jim, you know, you know, you're doing too much, but I disagree. I believe modesty in the Christian is very, very important. You know, now and you're coming out and you got a bunch of folk walking around and I said, man, where is this little gal's mommy at? And there she was over there with the same skin poking out. But what I'm saying is the assault on the young people, they can no longer distinguish I found myself in conversation with 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 young men and with with young men, church going young men, and he was talking about a YouTuber that said, "Hey man, and this YouTuber, hey man, when it comes to this game, he's a god." And I had to say, "Hey young fellow, there's only one God, you know. As Christians, we don't talk like that. But at the same time, this is the assault on the young mind to blur the lines of who God is and who God is not. You know, you know, they want to appeal uh, to the young and then like they did with little Isaac, and spring this trap. It is all by design. We got to understand, and I'm going to read briefly. This is what it says in the last days. You know, these these scriptures were written. 2,000 years ago, I often found that I've often wondered, how did Paul see 2,000 years? How did he know that in the last days, there would come a time where people's morality would be thrown to the wind? That there would come a time where promiscuity and boastfulness and pride would be rampant, that people would no longer know right from wrong. How did Paul know? I'm going to tell you, people, if we don't realize the resources that we have in our word, this word is eternal. This word is the living spirit of God. It is illuminated when the spirit of God is in us and we read this word, then we can decipher the environment around us. I'm coming to believe now, you know, even if the majority of pressure around me says, James, you're wrong and your real view concerning spiritual things that I know that as long as I'm kept by the spirit of God and I know that the spirit of God is separating me to hear his voice, I'm looking at, you know what? Even though I'm the minority, it is those that are around me that have the wrong view. And not that I'm judging or pointing the finger, but I know that I can walk righteousness. I can walk in the flow of God's spirit. And I and I, and as the days of Noah were, so are we looking. You know, one thing we got to remember about Noah. Noah, for 120 years, built an ark, looked like a maniac. 
people maybe walked by. If, he was, if Noble lived in our day, maybe they'd have been in the news. He'd have been on the news. Crazy man's building an ark for water that's for the fall out of the sky. Keep in mind that in Noah's time, it had never rained before. For the waters came up from the deep and watered the plant life on the earth at that time. There had never, it had not rained. And so here this man saying, some unseen monotheistic God told him that it was going to rain. And, you know, and about warnings, every time that hammer hit a nail, loud and echoed throughout the valleys of Noah's time was a warning to the people that they did not heed. 120 years worth of banging and, and cutting down trees and putting this gopher wood together for an ark with no windows. He, Noah did not have one convert outside of his family. Noah, when 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 God shut that door, keep in mind, the Bible says Noah didn't shut the door. But when God spoke to him, I wonder how long he was silent from the first time that God told him, build this ark. Maybe he didn't hear from God for 120 years, but by faith, he continued nail by nail, plank by plank to build that ark that would save him and his family and all future generations. All of us were saved by Noah's faith as we were in the loins of Noah's children. So, and on that fateful day when Noah heard, all right, it's time to get it on in the ark, get your stuff together. And he heard that voice one more time. And when they shut the door and it began to rain, and these people began to realize, you know what, Noah was right. And they knocked on that door. You know who was knocking? His brothers, his sisters, his cousins. I thought about that. And this had to be difficult. And just as it is for us, we have to continue to encourage men, you know, and I have difficulty sometimes coming out with messages like this. Sometimes I, sometimes I even say to myself, you know, I really don't want, you know, this is going to make me look outcasted. No one wants to hear that in the same way. No one wanted to hear Noah's pleas to walk right, to get right, to repent, to turn, to change the things that are going through your mind, to separate from the, the evil imaginations continually pulsating through every brain on the earth at that time. The things that we're doing is very, very real. Everything about this word is true. Second Peter chapter two, second Peter chapter two says this, and you know, and I was, and I was going to call this the, the demonic assault on young minds. Because there has been a, the same way that they systematically implanted little Nas X in front of the elementary school children and flipped the script. Now they got the person putting real blood in shoes, putting 666 on the shoes and twerking on the devil's lap. That is insane. And they and the know that that right there was done by design. Nine, ten-year-old children YouTubing this kid's video. And it was done by design. And so we need to know what is the design that Satan has used to eliminate the spiritual content that was once so prevalent. I don't care what anyone says. If anyone tries to deny that the grandmother, that the, that, that the old deacons that used to grace the back of our churches, even though they was half asleep, had a certain holiness and a certain reverence and a presence of the spirit that we find absent of our day. Absent of our day. Okay, second, second uh, Timothy, second uh, Timothy three, I mean two, says this. For men shall be, you know, know that there'll be perilous times, and you've heard this, know that there'll be perilous times uh, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. But the main thing I wanted to bring out that in the last days, a sign would be they would be disobedient to parents. Really? Now, I, now, 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 me personally, I can't help but notice a change or a shift in a lot of the children's behavior. You know, it's almost like, you know, we had a different reverence for our parents than the children today have. I know children that cuss freely in front of 
Has slept. They did, didn't they, Jazz? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they was up in there. They was half asleep in the back row, but they was up in there. Handing out candy and gum, and I thank God for them old school deacons, you know. But now there's been an assault even on them. And so, but you know, but look at, as far as the disobedience to parents, I remember when I was in high school, I played football. On Wednesdays, we would have to get out of practice early. Why? Because most, because 60% of the team had to go to church on Wednesday. Now they got, now they got Little League football games on Sundays. There's been a falling away. There's been a lax uh, attitude. But this is by design. If we put so much energy, we put so much energy into getting our children to football practice two, three times a week, and they can miss religious or spiritual assemblies, the, the team sport, to get to the team sport, and we're showing and teaching that kid that these temporal, these temporal things are more important than eternal things. Some say, James, well, that's just too much. I say it is what the doctor orders, what Christ intended. Look, I'm listen I listen to a lot of these old books. I listen to a lot of old school folks, John G. Lake. I'm li I just listened to a book by uh, uh, Leonard Ravenhill. I do a lot of Audible at work. I can put a thing in my ear. And I listen to a lot of Audible. I listen to Leonard Ravenhill, Why Revival Terries. Leonard Ravenhill probably died in the 90s. Came up through the 60s, 70s, 80s, doing the tent revivals. Most ain't ready. Most people, do, most religion, any of the ministers ain't, ain't ready to hear a book like that. And I just, and I was listening to a book by D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody was one of the greatest theologians and revivalists of the turn of the century, 21st century. You gotta look up these names. Who are these people? These, the, 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 the Christianity that these people display and talk about is unrecognizable. If these people were to wake up in their grave and see the religion as we have today, I, and I don't mean to offend anybody, we're just talking here, we want truth. I believe that they would be appalled. In a section of his book, back in those days, the theater had just first come out. There wasn't no, uh, it wasn't no love making scenes. What no, you know, a lot of stuff that we see today, raunchy and demonicism and conjuring and things of that nature, but and in a part of this book, he was talking to a woman, and the woman was saying, hey, you know, we go to theater every week with my family. And evidently, that was an issue. He was like, well, go to theater then. And she said, well, do you go to theater? I don't want nobody to tell me I can't go to the theater, go to the movies. Uh, and, and, you know, and feel free to do what you all feel. But we're speaking in general. It's, I mean, it's up to the individual, to whoever, whoever wants to go deep with the Lord. We we'll have to make these decisions within themselves. I do believe one of the trends that I see in some of these old school miracle working, world changing individuals that they did not they did not love the world to a point where they said, "I can't give nothing up." There was nothing on this earth, not not individual habit, not not hobby, not nothing that they wouldn't give up for their Lord. This is what we're going to have to get back to. But the thing, why, what has caused this disobedient to parents in our last day? I used to read it a long time ago and say, hey, the disobedient to parents, what, these children started to trip all of a sudden. Let me tell you something. It's not that the children started to change. It's that the society, the parents started to change how the children were raised. Now, how did it come to this? I wrote a couple of things down. These days, we see a mass departing from the faith we once knew. The example of a holiness, holiness that we used to see as children, it just doesn't exist anymore. Methods of targeting the youth that removed a holiness from the home and replaced that which was holy with tolerance. Things I remember when I was a young man, we used to look at movies. We had to, and you know, and even when we did look at movies, we had grown people in there saying, "Hey." Put them, put them hands over those eyes. Did they might be in there getting hot and heavy in the little scene? Nothing major. <laughs> you know, no real scene. But our parents and our grandparents, even then, well, that's too much. I, my grandma would have made us take it out. They would have made us take it out. But now we sit back with our children and, and critique and comment on the on the raunchiest scenes. I remember one time I was I was at a doctor's office one time. In the middle of the day, they had a TV on. I thought they had porn on the TV. I'm like, what is this? 
And they all, and it was like, man, it was a love making scene. I mean, it was crazy. I'm like, that's kill over here. Then all of a sudden, it went to commercial and it was TBS. I'm like, what in the world? That's, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. But what I'm saying is there is an assault. Now then they take and then they take these same you know, take these same shows. Now you look at shows. Even the shows that we used to look at, it's been a gradual change. Shows that we used to have moral to the story. What's happening? Where Raj and Raj and Rerun had, had, had stole some shoes. Now they gotta bring it back because they gotta do what's honest. Benson. Benson, uh, you know, had to go back and apologize to somebody for something. What's going on in Big Kenny? Something that he done. Now you look at these shows, which is a Waverly place. That, and, 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 and usually on these shows, the portrayals of their parents, especially the father, is usually some sort of bumbling idiot. Y'all think I'm crazy? If y'all don't notice this stuff, this is stuff by design. The father is usually a bumbling and it's an idiot. The children always got a scheme or doing something in secret. They're always in love or got some sort of boyfriend at 11 and 12 and got a girlfriend or boyfriend by design. This stuff is by design. This is an assault on your young mind. See, before you know it, Miley Cyrus dead is with Lil Nas X lap dancing on Satan. And, 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 and then when you uh, approach the parent who says, hey, I got to be this. And now and now we replace parents with friends. I said we replace parents with friends. Now, I don't know. Now, I want, I, I want my kid to be able to talk to me and come to me. And I want to be that guy. But I ain't your friend, young man. Some things, if it's too, you, you ain't you better hide it from me. They're, we've they're, they're, These kids have lost the taboo. They have lost the taboo. There are certain things that I, even, you know, you bring some get-up boys in the house, or you got an old Richard Pryor, I guess, you got an old Richard Pryor tape. We would play that, but she'd be quiet. My mama coming, turn it off. What you doing? Nothing. It was a, there was a, there, there was a hot and now parents are busting. Oh, yeah, old Richard, they sit back and quote the nastiest jokes right with their children. Take your 11 year old child. I mean, look, I'm going to step on some toes. So if you're sensitive, turn it off. We'll take and get condoms for your 10, 11, 12 year old little babies. Instead of telling them to abstain, it's Christians. If you ain't a Christian, then hey, man, you know what I'm saying? You, you, I expect you to think like the to think like the society gives you to think. But we've taken on the mentality of this world, and we wonder why there's no supernatural manifestations. We've lost the vision of holiness, of reverence in the church. Don't know what it is. You know, profane, you know, now all the children know is profanity and debauchery and promiscuity. And we give them drugs. The assault on young minds to the point where these children get up now. You have a young generation in their 20s that are full of anxiety, overly emotional, overly sexed, overly confused, full of demonic spirits and don't know why. It is the truth. It is the truth. It is a demonic assault. And the reason why they're like that, they have anxiety, depression. They don't know what direction they're going in. This is where we're at right now. Because we didn't want to listen. Instead of saying, hey, we, we're, not going to, we're, not, we're not going to indulge in the, these books about uh, 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 overly sexed vampires. Fifty Shades of Grey. The kid reading it, the mama reading it. Foolishness, no wisdom, no prayer. And now when the kids or the children or the family is faced with turmoil and confusion and breaking apart, no one knows how to handle it. They go through every avenue except prayer. Everything except God. The concept of true spirituality has been absolutely lost. The parent that used to have a problem and when all else failed, you know what? The doctors can't help. There's no psychiatrist. You know what? If we don't go, if God don't help us, we don't have a way to get out of this. They don't do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. Can you imagine people my age growing up like that? Well, this is what we face now. And then when you go to that same parent and say, hey, you know what? You got to go to prayer. Look at you like you're crazy. Because prayer is all I know. Prayer is the only thing that has saved me from ever, any situation I've ever been in in my life. The only thing that has helped me was God. Remember we talked about 
uh, learning by revelation. And we learn. So I learned that God is that God of deliverance for me. And now, and not only that, but we've turned youth church into ice cream parties, but do not teach scripture. We'll send our children to these youth events. And yes, there'll be plenty of songs and ice cream and candy and treats and, 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 and worldly associations. We'll make it look like the club, but it ain't the club, but you're playing music, but you're playing gospel music. And the kid come back and not know one scripture. I wouldn't send my kid to that. It's just me personally. You send them kids to know God, to know scripture. If you don't come back from some sort, if you, if you, if you are a youth minister, look, and this is a call. If you got kids, nephews, nieces, friends with children, you must pray for them. You are their only hope. What if their parents might not even be praying for them? If you are a youth minister, and you're not praying, fasting, separating for them children, then you need to hang it up. You need to give it to somebody. You, or pray to God, send somebody to camp. He's, James, you're being a little harsh, yes. Because these are harsh times. You got, you, you, you got folks twerking on the devil's lap. Well, there's Lady Gaga and rap music. You know, back when I was a kid, ACDC, I, uh, Ozzy Osbourne would bite the head off of bats. And they were like, oh, they worship the devil. After death, before Christ, all this stuff. Uh, I think with ACDC, against Christ, against Christ, the devil's child or something. And you know what? For them, the long hair, the rock and roller, demon worshipers, we, you know what? We expected that. But now, the our beloved rap music and things that are on the radio every day, now they got six, six, sixes on their foreheads. It's part of my, they've merged the demonic devil worshiper. Meg, the state, they got a song called, I can't, even, I can't even repeat it. It's so nasty today, I forgot what it's called, but yo. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Meg, Cardi. This is an assault on young minds. The relationships are not going to last. They're not going to have the Holy Spirit in the relationships. They need us. Does they still know us? They still have that resemblance. Us, and, and it's our fault. It's my generation's fault, to be honest with you. It's my generation's fault that they've dropped the ball. They've become more friend than parent. They have to learn that reverence. When they don't have the real right relationship, you got to understand every relationship we have is a precursor, is a practice to our orientation towards God. As we're children, we reverence the Father, even because and that opens up the, the orientation towards God, the, our Father God, and 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 also our relationship with our spousal uh, counterpart, the representation of Christ. All these relationships that we value are really training grounds for our relationship, the ultimate relationship with our God. Now, you know, and it's not just that, but it's also the assaults on, also assaults on the Christian faith, on Christianity. You know, I, you know, and I have a, I have another page with, it was a, a Hebrew Christian page. And there are, there are entities, there are, there are, there are schools of thought I'm like, yeah, it's called a Hebrew Christian. It just simply, it just simply believes that, uh, that 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 some of the true bloodlines of the Bible are dispersed throughout the world, and they also believe in Christian values, principles, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the person responded, "Well, the Hebrew and Christian that don't go together, because they looked at Christian, the term Christian is something negative." But I'm talking about a true Christian. I don't, I'm not, when I say I'm a Christian, I'm not talking about a thought that pops into one's head. I mean, there are some people there in the KKK or some people that are there in hate groups that call themselves Christians. That's not no Christian. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people that worship popes and, and worship different saints and, and believe that, that, that. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, when I mean Christian, I mean the purity of the word Christ-like. Okay, this is what I mean, Christian. Or they say, well, Christians believe, uh, you know, and, and there are different schools of thought. What I'm talking about is the purity of the word. But now, 
if you love the Christ, if you believe in holiness, if you believe in abstaining uh, until, until you're married, if you believe in walking righteously, people look at you like something's wrong with you. There's an attack on it. People come out publicly and say something about them Christians. If you don't believe in, if you don't believe in uh, 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 the, the sins of adultery, same-sex marriage, people say you, you, you're intolerant, you're mean, you're an enemy. There's an attack. This is a demonic attack. They're, you know what I'm saying? And these days, everyone has an opinion instead of separating and fasting and hearing from God. So everybody's separate. Caught up in their feelings. Look, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna read this last thing, and I'm gonna need help with this because this is something I feel that God showed me concerning the last days. I, I feel like He showed me this ten years ago. I'm gonna turn to um the book of Joel. And, you know, last week we talked about learning through revelation, and God has always dealt with me learning the Bible through revelation. Well, you know, one day I was reading the good word, and I was reading in the book of Joel, and Joel encounters an army of locusts, which when I read the commentary about it, I always felt that this army of locusts was uh, literal grasshoppers or locusts that infiltrated the nation of Israel in his day. So I'm going to read the beginning of it. You know where it says that which the locusts have eaten the palm of worm? Excuse me. I'll read it starting in Joel 1 4. That which the palm worm has left has the locust eaten. That which the locust has left has the canker worm eaten. That which the canker worm has left the calipiter has eaten. Awake, you drunkards, and weep. And how are ye drinkers of wine? Because the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come out up on the land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion and hath a cheek teeth of a great lion. He has laid my vine waste and barked my tree. Uh, and he has made it clean, bare, and cast it away. The branches, therefore, are made white. You can you can read over something like that and keep it moving. But God directed my attention one day to a passage in the book of Revelations and began to give me some insight and some revelation on what Joel was seeing and compared that to what John had seen. In Revelation chapter 9, the fifth trumpet was being blown. And, the fifth, and I'm going to read this, I'm going to read uh, about 10, 12 verses. And the angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven and unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of that pit, and the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke, and there came, listen to it, and there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power, and it was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their foreheads, and to them there was given them that they shouldn't kill, but they should be tormented for five months, and the torment uh, was like a scorpion when it striketh a man. And in those days, men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locust were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had their hair as of women and their teeth was as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions that they were to sting with their tails. And their power was to hurt men for five months. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew was Abaddon, but in the Greek, his tongue, his name is Apollyon or Apollos. The one woe was passed. Behold, there come more woes hereafter. Now I could break this thing down, and it, what I once thought was an was a was a, a a herd of bugs. I realized that God was showing that in the last days there would be a demonic army to infiltrate the earth. And I do feel that this, this army that God was showing me this 
to signify our day. Now, some of the things that I was shown in this by God. One, it says, awake ye drunkards and weep, all ye drinkers of wine. This is Joel uh, 1, 5. Because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. He said that, and they ate up everything that was green. Now, this is, when you read the Bible, you'll see that the Bible often uh, uses or transfers words. He'll call people, trees, the new wine. Do you remember that? Does that sound familiar? What had to be put into new wine skins? Or they'll burst the wines. New wine must be put into new wine skins. This is the doctrine that Christ was saying that those, that those that were in him would understand the new doctrine or the new wine. But here, because of these locusts, the new wine is cut off. Look, Joel goes on to say, Joel uh, chapter 1 verse 6 says, they had lion's teeth. In Revelations, John sees the same thing. Revelations 9 verse 8, they had teeth of lions. Joel, back in chapter 2 verse 4 says, their shape was the shape of uh, appearance of horses. John sees the same thing. Revelation 9, verse 7. The shape was the shape of horses. Joel said the sound was like the sound of chariots on the top of mountains in Joel 2, 5. John in Revelation says the sound was the sound of chariots. Now, so I see the same army that Joel saw was the same army that John saw in Revelation. Where was this? Was the angel the, the star? The stars remember the dragon swooped the third of the stars. I look, I know this, don't want to confuse you too much. But this is the language of the Bible as we get into the word. The Bible is made plain, the Bible is made true. You see that the prophecies of the Bible are plain for anyone to see that'll give themselves to the word of God. You'll see that the truth of God's word. He's telling you that we better be, and it goes on to say that when you see this happening, now it says uh, in, in Revelations also, it says that I saw a stream issue out from the city of God and on each side were trees and their leaves were for the healing of nations. It goes on to say that these trees were Holy Ghost filled individuals and their leaves was the fruit. My vine is laid bare. Who's the vine? Who are the branches? He's the vine. We are the branches. What laid it bare? This unclean demonic army that was opened from the bottomless pit at a particular time to eat all those things that are green. What's green? The fruit that we must bear for our Lord. So what are we to do? The Bible goes on to say that we are to be in prayer. The priests, you ministers of God, this is in Joel, that we should weep between the porch and the altar. I hope someone is not just, this is not just no analytical Bible study, but this is God trying to say, look, there's a, there is an attack on the young minds at our time. If you have any young people in your family, your children, your tonight, tomorrow night, every second Friday that we have our, our, our prayer at Abundant Living Christian Ministries, 353 uh, Old Cemetery Road, you better be praying for them. This is not a time for lackadaisicalness, for missing church services, for thinking we're going to just breeze on by the way. No, these are times of dire need where God needs you to step up. Forget, forget people that think, who care, think you might be doing too much. That's nonsense. They're not spiritual people. We need to bring back, we need to bring back the ways of true holiness, the ways of true righteousness. Bring back walking in the Holy Spirit every day. Be dissatisfied. And it's okay if you don't feel that way. You know, pray and ask God, God, if there's a greater level that I could go, then give it to me. I don't think that we've seen the absolutely supernatural flow that God wants to administer to us. The few. I believe the Bible goes on to say, Joel, this same passage is quoted in the second chapter of the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit falls, and it was like, yeah, what y'all doing? Why y'all speaking in tongues? And Peter goes on to say, this is that which the prophet Joel prophesied. Then in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your young men shall prophesy, your young men and maid servants shall prophesy and dream, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
But that didn't come until after the canker worm and the plumber had eaten everything. Then Joel goes on to say that the minister and the priest of the Lord put on sackcloth and ashes and pleaded with the Lord for this church, for those that are lost, for those that were being attacked by this army of locusts. Then, and matter of fact, the title of it, the Lord's call to repentance in the second, in the second chapter of the book of Joel. The book of Joel is the ninth chapter of Revelations. I, it, it's not from any book. This is what the Lord has showed me. And I'm telling you, six of us know this. Six of us know this. You are called to listen. Well, five of us, because one just left. <laughs> you know, might have been too much, but that's fine. It might not, it might not be for everybody. But you were called to hear this revelation. You were called to hear this truth. Read the first and second chapters of Joel. Compare this army of locusts. Locusts don't have hair like women, breastplates of gold, crowns. Locusts don't not come out of a bottomless pit, out of the smoke from a bottomless pit. This is the language of the Bible. This is the language of me and of you, those that are full of God's spirit. Hallelujah. See, you know, I'm excited. I belong to God. Those that are missing it, God forbid that one person misses heaven because I've failed to pray properly. This is what I was praying for God the other night. I can sense and I can see there is an ebb, you know, there is a there is an ebb. There is a lower degree of holiness, righteousness, and spiritual power in our day. I said to a friend of mine, and I've been going to God like I don't remember the last time I've like really seen somebody saved. I've been going to church. The power to convert seems to be low. The power to walk right and holy seems to be low. The power to tap into deep spiritual things seems to be low. And so my prayer has been to God, God, please restore your church. Give us back the, listen, me being a great convincer would not convert anybody's from unstum, from a path going to hell to a path to heaven. That person has to be born again by supernatural means. If a person is just religious, will continue to fornicate, will continue to lie, will continue to get drunk, will continue to do everything they've done in the world, but do religious things. But that born again person, the person who was really born of God, will have supernatural power to do what they could not have done before. Simple as that. Simple as that. That's how you separate the true from the fake, the real from the false. The man that is born again will have a desire to walk in righteousness and true holiness. He will not be bogged down by debilitating addictions. I mean, he'll have to go through some battles. Don't get me wrong. But the desire will overcome that if you're born again. Okay? So there you have it, the attack, the demonic attack on the youth in our day, not on my watch. I will be a watchman. I will continue to pray. I, I'll pray for mine. I'll pray for yours. But you pray. If we've been together, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I know I'm speaking with conviction. I know I'm speaking with a little bit of passion. B baby, it's who I am. It's what I do. Mine's made up. And that there is the truth. Well, look, I hope you've been uh, enriched. Now look, now, look, God added something to us. It's not many of us. Look, y'all share this with somebody. Share this somewhere. Tell somebody. The, 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 the army of locusts is a demonic army to attack. It's there to eat up everything that's green. It, it, I'm, it, this army is, set, is going to attack those that don't have the seal of God on their forehead. They're going to want to die. They're going to be steeped in depression and hurt, and they're going to be lost. That army can't sting you, not with that seal on your forehead. You understand? So we got to try to cover those. We got to try to get as many sealed. If they don't, they'll be at the mercies of that five-month scorpion stings torment. This stuff is real. And we got to dig deep into God way before him as he explains to us what these things are. And anything that may have been confusing or may have sounded too deep, then pray about it. Or you can, of course, inbox me, ask me any question. You're more than welcome to. Or if you got my number and want to call, you can do that too. 
I'm always available to talk about the things of God and to enrich my brothers and sisters. Iron sharpens iron. I want to pray us out real quick. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, another Bible study. We thank you for this word. I thank you for my aunt. I thank you for the elder and overseer of our church at Abundant Living Christian Ministries. That is how she prayed for me and she just prayed the spirit before this in me of energy. And, and Lord, we just thank you, God. I thank you for the people that came in and tuned in and listened tonight. They are called, they are set aside, they are chosen to hear this message. Show them who they are in you, God. Just like, just like Elijah uh, 